live. Okay, we're live. Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome to our Cook With Us live demo on Facebook for today. We've changed to a new day. So thank you for those of you who remembered and are joining us on Tuesday, our new day for our Facebook live Cook With Us demos. So today's recipe is a mouthful and I don't know how many people are viewing at the moment whether I should go straight into it or whether I should do a little intro first but for those of you who don't know me my name is Cece I'm the community outreach team leader for down to earth and I have had the privilege of teaching you guys how to cook in your own home on your lunch break hopefully not while you're driving but <laughs> wherever you are it's been awesome to have you join us here in our Honolulu community kitchen so today's recipe like I said, is a mouthful. It's a vegan mac and cheese, pulled pork, and bacon wrap. So if you would like the recipe, you can go to d2e.co slash mpb wrap. M for mac and cheese, P for pulled pork, and B for bacon, mpb wrap. You can find the recipe on there and follow along with us as we cook here in our community kitchen. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, thank you so much. I know some of you are really excited over on Instagram, so you may have joined us over from there. So this recipe is a three-part recipe, and it actually involves a recipe that we already did last Friday on Instagram. So for those of you who did not catch that demo, that was our Kahlua jackfruit demo. I actually made it ahead of time. I did half of the recipe that you're following along with, just for demonstration purposes. And I actually did this one without cabbage. So it's just the jackfruit. You can see it looks, kind of has that consistency of pulled pork. You can find that demo on our Instagram page, or I've actually created a short link as well, d2e.co. Oh, that's the, that's the recipe for, for the demo that we did. And if you want to go to the actual Instagram page, you can go to d2e.co slash jackfruit live. Yeah. So that's for the actual Instagram demo. And a video of the demo will be on this page soon. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. Coming at you soon. So this is our pulled pork that we're going to be using in our wrap. But what I want to show you is actually our bacon part of the recipe. Now, I am going to be using these rice paper rolls. Now, you're probably looking at this thinking, how is that going to become bacon? <laughs> we are going to be performing some plant-based magic in this kitchen today. It's an ingredient that is so, that's why this recipe is so amazing, because it's an ingredient that is actually so affordable, and it comes with, you know, there are how many of these wraps in here? I think there are probably about, you know, 10 at, at least, probably way more than that in this pack. And each, each wrap can actually make several pieces of bacon. So, first thing I'm going to do, you can see that it's actually quite tough, the <laughs> the texture. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score the wrapper and that will actually allow me to kind of break it apart. Mm. Now it does break apart, you see even this one, it breaks apart pretty easily on its own. So you don't want to be putting too much force into it. You can just watch as I do it. And it's okay if you lose a couple of pieces here and there. That's totally fine. It's not going to, you know, bacon is not perfectly sliced clean anyway. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to score it in half first. And if you want your bacon to be larger pieces, and I'm just going to snap it like this, and you can see it just snaps sort of along that line. This one didn't quite do it. That's okay. And I'm going to cut these now into smaller slices. Now, if you want your bacon to be a really long strip, then you can just leave it like this and cut like this, score it like this and snap like that. But I'm actually making them smaller because I'm putting them into a wrap. So I'm going to slice them into smaller pieces like this. And you'll notice they don't slice terribly easily. I'm just scoring them so I can snap them. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to match up the, the pieces on each side with each other. The reason I'm creating these twin sets 
is because I'm going to double layer my bacon when I actually put it on my baking sheet. So these ones go together and then these ones go together. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if you if you try and make it with a single layer, it actually burns super easy and it's very flimsy. It doesn't have the same consistency, um, that chewiness that mm -hmm. you might be looking for. Does so, the texture and the wrap, does that help with the that bacony texture that you're yes, looking for? Yes, it's, it's very chewy. Now, I'm not going to, you know, I haven't eaten bacon in like, you know, over 12 years and I don't necessarily remember what it tastes like. Yeah. But um, it definitely doesn't have the same, you're not going to fool anyone by saying this is bacon, <laughs> but it definitely has the, the flavoring, the mm. seasoning mm. and um, and it's really yummy, yeah. even if it doesn't taste or look like bacon. Yeah. So. And, and you know, there's a lot of um, bacon substitutes out there. Yes. But this one is probably the cheapest one I've seen. Yeah, it's really, really affordable. The most expensive ingredient on here can actually even be substituted. Yeah. So it's very affordable. So. Can you show the wrapper yes. again? Can you turn it off? You can you. buy these. You can buy these in our stores. And yeah. they, we also carry a brown rice variety mm. in some of our stores, not all. Mm -hmm. But um, often I like to use that one for this recipe as yeah. well because it naturally has that darker yeah. coloring. Which and where do where do we find this? Because actually I'm not even familiar with You can get are. this in the Asian section in our stores. So okay. we have like our, our um, Asian slash Mexican slash Indian aisle. Mm -hmm. You can find it there. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to, and this is an important step, and you don't want to switch these steps around because <laughs> I've shared this recipe. This is actually a great recipe for, for Father's Day coming up because we know a lot of dads do love their bacon. And it's a great recipe that you can make with your kids. It's really fun to make with kids. And um, and actually, this is my boyfriend's recipe. So we know that the men love it. This is, <laughs> his recipe is suited to men's taste. But I love it also. So it's not isolated to men. But you, you can definitely make this for the dads in your life for next, next Sunday's Father's Day. So what I'm going to do is... You don't want to switch these steps around because my friends who I've shared this recipe with have switched the steps around and told me it's really, really hard to manage when you try to dunk it in the water first and then cut mm -hmm. it because mm -hmm. it softens it and it's very sticky. And so you want to mm -hmm. score them first. Then you're going to dip your piece into... Oh, before I do that, I have to make my marinade. And actually, okay. you can see now that I dip this in, you're going to see how soft and hard to manage it becomes. But yeah. before I do that, let me make my marinade first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my favorite ingredient yep. that I use for everything. Yep. Coconut aminos, yep. shout out, it's on <laughs> Super Saver right now. So if you want to check out our Super Saver deals, you can grab a copy of the flyer in stores or on our website, downtoearth.org. So I'm going to add just a couple of tablespoons, and you know what? I'm going to switch my workstation around a little bit so you can see everything a little clearer. Okay. I'm going to move my, my spring rolls away momentarily, my spring roll wrappers. And those are the same wrappers that you use for summer rolls. Mm -hmm. So spring roll, mm -hmm. summer roll. I always get confused what to call them, but the ones that you use to wrap with the, you know, with tofu and different veggies inside. So I'm adding my coconut aminos. Okay. You can use any substitute um, like shoyu or tamari or Bragg's mm -hmm. liquid aminos. And then I'm going to take actually a couple of tablespoons of this water here okay. just to make sure I have enough and to water down my mm -hmm. marinade a little bit. Did you choose these um, pans or bowls? Specifically because they're shallow or does it matter? It doesn't really matter. It just it's a little bit easier if they are mm. shallow because you you know you can kind of dip them easy easily. But whatever dish you have will be fine. Okay. Um any any dish that you can basically put your put your mix in. And then I'm going to add a little bit of oh, where is my oh here it is. My onion powder and garlic powder in there. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, nice. you want that seasoning. <laughs> this is my boyfriend's garlicky oniony recipe. Yay. So I'm going to mix that around a little bit. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sesame oil. Mm -hmm. 
I'm using toasted sesame oil. It's just a little bit more flavorful than the mm. regular sesame mm. oil. But if you only have non-toasted, you can definitely use that as well. Okay. And then I'm going to put in some maple syrup. Like I said, this is probably the most expensive ingredient on the recipe and you can substitute it with another sweetener like coconut nectar or honey agave the reason i'm using maple syrup is because of that maple bacon kind of flavor hmm. but you're definitely yeah. welcome to substitute very classic american yes. flavor exactly so i'm going to put a little bit of the maple syrup in there and then the last ingredient i'm going to add really helps to provide <laughs> the coloring shocker yeah oh, it's just not a cc recipe without, <laughs> without coconut paprika. yeah coconut aminos and smoked paprika yes my two favorite yes they love each other as well <laughs> okay so i'm going to pop a little bit of the smoked paprika in here and it mm. really it really depends on how smoky you want it mm. as to how much you add and also how colored you want it. Okay. It provides the coloring of the bacon. So now I'm going to mix this all together and make sure that it's well distributed. And you can see that smoked paprika really gives it that redness. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'll show you some examples of ones that I put earlier that I didn't put as much smoked paprika in. Okay, so now comes the part where I'm going to dip these. So you can see this one I dipped in the water, and it's very kind of... Wow. Um, it's very flimsy. flimsy. Sticky. If you stick two sides together, mm. they're going to stick, mm. um, and it's not as easy to manage. So this one I dipped in the water already. I can dip this now in my marinade. Yep. And then I'm just going to... Lay it on my baking sheet, okay. and then my matching piece, which was this one here, mm -hmm. I'm going to put in the water. Yeah. Put it on the marinade. So you have like a nice assembly I line do. here. And often, you know, what I do is I actually will score many of these pieces, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I'll I'll make I'll do my assembly line just because right. it's. It depends how much space I have. Right, right, right. And I actually often do this in the air fryer. Mm. Um, I'm going to, the one I'm making today is going to be in the oven. Right. And I know not everybody has an air fryer, and you definitely don't have to have an air fryer to make these. But I do find that the air fryer does make them a little bit more crispy. Mm -hmm. So... So you see all of our twins going on yep. together. Very crucial step. Yes. Crucial, crucial make sure step. It's a twin yes support each other <laughs> right they need to be there for each other are there any questions so far about any of the any of our um steps or any ingredients or anything uh there's no questions from the customers okay. yet but obviously i'm thinking like this is such a since it takes a little bit of time to make this yep. how well how much time in advance can you make this Great question. So this is not the kind of recipe that I usually leave and then forget about. Yeah. One, because it doesn't take a lot of time in the oven or the air fryer. It only takes, in the air fryer, only about four or five minutes. In the oven, only seven to eight minutes. So what I usually do is I'll make a layer, and then while that one's cooking, I'll make another layer. Mm -hmm. So it's not a recipe you can kind of just do and then go away and do your dishes in the right. meantime. So I would set aside at least a good half an hour to mm. actually spend time mm -hmm. making them. Because half an hour will make you three layers, basically. Right. Because three sets of seven to eight minutes in the oven. A little bit of prep time on either side mm -hmm. as well. So I'm just going to demo this this little batch just for demonstration mm -hmm. purposes. You might have a little bit of a risk here. And now we're going to go over to the oven. So, I preheated the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to put them straight in. Like so, can I make like a big batch of this like a week ahead oh. or? Yeah. Absolutely. You can make a big batch. The texture definitely doesn't keep well. I made these mm. and I put them in the fridge. Um, they're not as, they're still, they're actually more flavorful the next day, mm -hmm. which isn't surprising, but the texture is very, very different. Right. So if you're just wanting to use it, you know, maybe with some other dishes, just to add some flavor, mm -hmm. then yes, definitely you can keep it overnight or for a few days. But if you're wanting it as a very clear bacon dish, I would probably have it spread. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, now we're gonna go over and make our mac and cheese. Okay, so I did actually make a vegan grilled cheese sandwich a couple of weeks ago on an Instagram live demo. And um, the, the demo link is d2e.co slash cheese live if you want to see that demo. I did do a demo um, and basically that recipe is actually a very healthy cheesy recipe. Mm. So if you're looking for a very, very healthy mac and cheese, not that this one isn't healthy, but that one's <laughs> even healthier. It's got potatoes and carrots in it. It's like a very veggie filled mac and cheese, but cheesy recipe. You can use that one and you can use that sauce for this mac mm. and cheese recipe. Or if you want the kind of a little bit fattier tasting one, creamier, then this is probably the one. Mm. So the main ingredient for our mac and cheese, well, apart from our macaroni, mm -hmm. is our cashews. Okay. So I soaked these cashews for about three hours. You can see they're engorged. And the reason I say this one is probably closer to your you know, your dad mac and cheese is because it's, it does, the cashews make it taste very fatty mm -hmm. and creamy. So mm -hmm. that's why we use the cashews. Yeah. If you are nut free, you can actually substitute cashews with hemp seeds, but I would recommend actually trying that other recipe if you're nut free because it uses less cashews and the substitute for hemp seeds is less. Hemp seeds are usually dearer than cashews, so so if you're thinking budget-wise as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to pop these cashews in here, and then a little bit of water. Then I'm going to put some lemon in there. Make sure you always roll your lemon before you squeeze, and that allows the juices to flow. Any questions while we are waiting? Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. I guess it, even if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can yeah. also just use a boxed mac yes. and cheese as well. Great point. We have a number of, woo, I'm always squeezing lemon everywhere. We have a number of boxed uh, mac and cheeses yeah. that are very, very yeah. popular. And we have uh, regular ones, we have gluten-free ones, even uh, vegan ones. That's right. And you can find them at downtoearth.org if you want to shop online for curbside pickup or delivery. Um, and you can just search for, you can search for different product categories like mac and cheese or you can search for pasta, whatever you want. It's, it's very, very easy to use that, that um, system. Okay, so I'm going to put some, this is actually what really makes this cheesy sauce cheesy and that is nutritional yeast. Mm. It just, you cannot really, I, I've never made a cheesy sauce without nutritional yeast. So that's, that's just crazy talk. Right. <laughs> that is definite, um, definite essential for every cheesy sauce. Oh, I have an interesting question. Yeah. So someone asked, are there any without oil? I'm assuming you're talking about the mac and cheese box, box, box packages. And I'm going to say probably not. Right. You, you would need to make that yourself. Yes. But you have your, your other recipe is easy to substitute yes. the oil. In. The other recipe, I actually don't even know if I have oil in my other recipe because I don't often cook with oil. That is this recipe here. Yeah. To e .co slash grilled cheese. Yeah. But even if it does have oil, you can actually very easily substitute with veggie broccoli. Right. Instead. But I, I'm pretty certain it doesn't have oil because most yeah. of my recipes, most of them, except for like ones where I use sesame oil for flavoring, most are actually oil free yeah. and I just saute yeah. in, um, in veggie broth. Yeah. So this one also is oil free, but it's not low fat because it does have cashews in it. So okay. if you're an Akahi Ornish or if you've been on one of those low fat diets, then you still want to make sure that um, you try the other recipe because yeah. that's definitely low fat, <laughs> but this one is oil free. Right. So. Um, well, not the other part. This mac and cheese part. Is yes. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to put some garlic powder and I'm actually putting some turmeric in. Not really for flavor. You don't want to put a whole lot in. Um, it's more just for coloring. Mm -hmm. That gives mm -hmm. it that because turmeric stains everything yellow, yes. including food. So it gives it the coloring that you want. So yeah. put my garlic powder and turmeric in here. And my last ingredient I'm going to put in is just a little bit of salt. 
And actually, the nutritional yeast does have some natural saltiness to it. It's not exactly salty, but the flavor is just, mm. it's so out of this world that it kind of makes up, even if you don't have a whole lot of salt, it really, it really helps. Right. Okay, so now I'm just going to blend this all together. Okay, okay. ideally you want a high-powered blender. If you don't have a high-powered blender, food processor is great as well. So it's going to make some noise. about that ruckus but I wanted to make it really smooth so you can see how nice and creamy the cashews mm. become so that is our cheesy sauce now at this point you can do a couple of things you can either and I'm gonna show you now our pasta that we use and this is actually a brown rice elbow. This is my favorite macaroni pasta that's gluten free. Of course, you can use any any kind of pasta you like. If you want to use a whole wheat pasta, you're welcome to as well. Because I am gluten sensitive and I usually try to avoid gluten, I have a lot of experience with different gluten free pastas. And this one is definitely one of my, it probably is my favorite for yeah. macaroni. It is. Some, some macaroni pastas do become mushy, the gluten-free ones. This one is awesome. <laughs> the only thing is that this one cooks for a little bit longer than the other yeah. gluten-free ones. It cooks for about 15 minutes as opposed to some of the others cook for only 7 to 8 minutes. Yeah. But the bean pastas are really great as well. We have some yeah. chickpea pastas and things like that. This brand really knows what are your concerns because yes. right there it says not mushy. Oh, yes. That's exactly. <laughs> Good texture, yes. not mushy, al dente. Fine. Biggest concern with gluten-free pasta. Yeah. And usually once I finish cooking it, I didn't do it this time, which is why it's sticking together a little bit. I usually um, tr I usually rinse it with cold water first, and then I put a little bit of oil to stop it from sticking together. You can see that when I don't do that, it does stick together a little bit. So at this point, oh, I can smell that cheesiness. At this point, you can put your sauce in, pour that all in there, and give it a stir. And you can do two things. You can either leave it as is. Look at that. Yum. Look at that macaroni. It has that Mixy. classic yellow yes. sauce. Thank you, turmeric. Hello, turmeric. Okay. So you can either do that or, oh, you know what? Our bacon has been cooking a really long time. I think I, it's been burnt to a crisp. Oh, no. Then hear it go off. So that's okay. I'm going to pull it out. I do have some prepared earlier, just in case. Let's see. Because, you know, oh, I actually, bacon. I know a lot of people prefer their bacon, bacon to be burnt. burnt. So this it might one, not be that bad. This one is not ideal when it's burnt. But it's mm. okay. I did make some earlier just so you can, just in case. I was thinking, I'm not sure if I'm going to hear the oven while I'm demoing everything else. Yeah. So I'm glad actually that that happened right. because <laughs> I didn't hear the buzzer go off. Yeah. So, so that happened and the bacon is burnt, but that's what happens in the kitchen sometimes. Yeah. And you just roll with it. And thankfully, this is so easy to make that you can make another batch so quickly. Okay. Yep. So back to the mac and cheese. All right. Now, you can either leave it like this, which is already a very creamy mac and cheese. Obviously, you know, it looks like mac and cheese already. Or if you want to take it to the next level, you can put it in the oven at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit for, you know what? It really depends on the oven for anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. It basically, you want to see it start to crisp on top and then it's ready. Mm. So you do need to watch it a little bit. But yeah, 10 to 15 minutes or sometimes to speed it up, I'll even broil it a little bit. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it depends what you want to do. This is already a complete mac and cheese and right. you can smell the cheesiness. It's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to use our burnt bacon for the assembly of our wrap. I'm going to use some bacon that, 
I magically prepared earlier. <laughs> so you can see this bacon is actually not as red as the bacon that I put into the oven on this demo just because I didn't put as much smoked paprika. Mm. So if you want it to have a more red kind of coloring, then you just put more smoked paprika. Mm -hmm. And also, like I said, if you use brown rice paper rolls, then that often will add to the coloring as well. Makes it a little bit darker. Okay, so now I'm going to assemble, let's clear out my workstation a little bit. I've got my, got my what is this called again? Rice paper bacon. <laughs> I was like, rice it's paper. not bacon, but it is bacon, but it's not bacon. Okay. And the wrap I'm using, this is the quality of that wrap is so awesome. This is a product product that we have in our bakery section. And it's just three ingredients. It's coconut meat, coconut water, and coconut oil. Yep. It's really, really, it's like paleo, it's um grain free. It, it it's up. all the things. Yes, it's like <laughs> everything that you can think of. You know, it's raw as well. There's no mm -hmm. salt, so right. you know everything that and it's gluten free. Right. So suits a lot of a lot of dietary quirks. Okay. So it comes on this sheet, and you can actually smell the coconut as soon as you pull it out. Yeah, we're gonna. And I have been known to rip these very very easily, so I'm trying to be a little more careful as I pull it out. Here we go. Okay. It comes out like this. There's the wrap. I did a terrible job of pulling this out because it was stuck to a couple of different sheets, but that's okay. As long as you can see it. And I love it because sometimes gluten-free wraps can break when you fold them, but mm -hmm. I love this one because it's actually very foldable, as you yeah. can see. So yeah, it smells crazy like it, coconut. It smells here. like coconut, yeah. So basically, I'm going to assemble my wrap here. I'm going to put a little bit of mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to put too much because I want to make sure that I can roll it into a wrap. But you can also make a sandwich with this if mm -hmm. you would prefer to make a sandwich. And Cece's putting on her pork. This is the pulled pork. And then... Made out of, made out of jackfruit. And then I'm going to put my bacon on there now this bacon is very crispy and you can now see why i made the pieces smaller because a long piece would have just completely not worked right so now i'm i can fold it a couple of ways i can either roll it and just slice mm -hmm. it in half and do it that way or you can fold it like a burrito it's really yeah. up to you i think for the purpose of this demo it might be easier if i just do this like that and then you can just slice it in half. And you can make it fatter if you want it to be a more substantial wrap. Mm -hmm. I just know that if I try to make it really full, I'm probably going to end up spilling it everywhere. But that's what it ends up looking like. You've yeah. got your mac and cheese, your bacon, your pulled pork. <laughs> that is your wow. wrap. And of course, if you use a bigger wrap, you're going to have bigger room for ingredients. Yeah. And I'll say that um, because of, we're trying to show you how many different alternative ways to do it. Yeah. I mean, at home, you can just do a basic mac and cheese that's in a box. You can yeah. use whatever kind of wraps that yeah. you have at home, a tortilla wrap. Um, and, you know, you could buy the pulled pork jackfruit. Yeah. And we also have vegan bacon all yeah. over the store. And you know what? You don't even need to put it in a wrap or a sandwich. Even if you just made these separately and put it, yeah. especially if you made a mac and cheese bake or a casserole, if you had that out of the oven, just sprinkle some of the pulled jackfruit pork on it and then put some slices of bacon on top. Yeah. Voila. So there are so many ways that you can... You can arrange and assemble this recipe. It's totally up to you. But yeah. the combo of these three, I mean, these are favorites to so many dads. How many dads love their mac and cheese? How many dads love their pulled pork, soon to be converted to pulled jackfruit, and <laughs> their bacon? Yeah. And this is delicious crispy. Look at this crispiness. You can actually see it in there. Yeah. It's so yummy. I think I'm going to take a bite. Ready? Ooh, I 
You can hear that crispy, yeah. crispy crunchiness. Thanks so much for joining us and love life, eat healthy, be happy.